The manual of arms dates back to ancient times when commanders would drill their troops in preparation for battle. These repeated drills ensured familiarity and confidence in the handling of weapons. It instilled automatic and immediate response to commands that were vital to success on the battlefield and physically conditioned warriors to handle the heavy personal weapons of that era. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the commanding officer of Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron 1, Colonel Edmund B. Hip. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is Colonel Charles W. Del Pizzo. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of the command. The battle colors of a Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Colonel Edmund B. Hip and by accepting the colors Colonel Charles W. Del Pizzo accepts command and confirms his total commitment to the Marines and sailors that he will command. Sergeant Major Luis A. Galvez is delivering the colors to the commanding officer.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the passing of the colors. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Colonel Edmund B. Hip. Subject, relinquishment of command. Effective 0900, 21 June 2024. You stand relieved of your duties as the commanding officer, Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron 1. You will report for duty as J-35, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, Camp Smith, Hawaii. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Colonel Charles W. Del Pizzo. Subject, Assumption of Command. Effective 0901, 21 June 2024. You will assume duty as the commanding officer of Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron 1. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Thank you. Please be seated. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Deputy Commandant for Aviation, Lieutenant General Bradford J. Gehring. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to Lieutenant General Gehring. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of colors and remain standing for presentation of the award.
United States of America. This is to certify the President of the United States of America has awarded the Legion of Merit to Colonel Edmund B. Hill, United States Marine Corps, for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as the commanding officer, Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron 1, from June 2022 to June 2024. Colonel Hipp demonstrated superior leadership and transformational vision to accomplish the strategic mission to test, evaluate, and develop tactics, techniques, and procedures for marine aviation. His exceptional insight into fleet needs, programmatic challenges, and effective use of limited resources enabled the squadron to provide timely, relevant information and capabilities to Marine Corps leadership. Leading the Marine Corps' sole test and evaluation squadron, he successfully oversaw several CH-53 Kilo tests, GBU-53 Small Diameter Bomb 2 tests, Marine Air Defense Integrated System Support, and H-1 Digital Interoperability Upgrades. His visionary leadership also produced developments in expeditionary advanced base operations and anti-submarine warfare through Obsidian Iceberg 2023, Project Arachne, Project Seahawk, Blue Crayon, and opening the Southern Trans-Pacific Route, an enabler for all combatant commanders. Under his leadership, the squadron safely conducted over 93,000 direct maintenance man hours and flew over 3,300 flight hours, including over 1,600 hours of test and evaluation. His vision ensured the Marine aviation's future survivability, lethality, and relevance as he led his team of Marines, sailors, and civilians. Colonel Hipp's exceptional professionalism, keen judgment, and loyal dedication to duty reflected great credit on him and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. For the President, sign Eric M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commandant for Aviation, Lieutenant General Bradford J. Gehring. All right, can everybody hear me? Oh, yeah, that's good. General Halston, great to be with you, sir, as always. Um, SES Loxley, first time I'm meeting you, but I look forward to working with you. Glad you're here. General Kalei is here. Uh, to all of our commanders, uh, to all of our senior staff, our senior leaders, a lot of great industry reps here. But I think most important, um, important thing on this day is really the family and friends. And there's a lot of family here, and there's a lot of friends here, a lot of personal friends of mine who I see in the crowd. And I look forward to reconnecting. And uh, we're going to go to Lutz Casino later, so I'm a little nervous because. Uh, we ran pretty hard up and down these flight lines for a good, better part of two and a half decades, but uh, really, really glad to be here. And I'll tell you, today's a special day. It's a special day for me to be in Yuma because this is my home. Um, I spent 15 years of my life here, special place in my heart. I love coming back. Uh, but it's also a really special day and a special milestone in the history of this squadron. And I'll talk just a brief bit about that. I know it's going to get warm. Um, but. I look at change of commands as it's all about chapters. So today we have the opportunity to close a chapter on the incredible history of this unit. We get to recognize uh, the guy that did it and celebrate, and then we get to open up a new chapter uh, that the Del Pizos are gonna write. And I've done a fair number of change of commands over my career, and for the better part of three decades, I kind of look at them as bittersweet and I don't look, in that, look at them as bittersweet anymore, and here's why. It's certainly sweet because you get to welcome in a new command team, and it's certainly sweet because you get to celebrate, recognize, and bid farewell to a command team. But it's not bitter, because I'll tell you, when you're in command, if you pour, pour your heart and soul into it, and you leave it all on the field each and every day, as I know Brad and Heather have, then when your time comes up, you know it's time to go. And you walk away with a lot of pride, and then you walk away to the, you walk on to the next easy assignment at the J-35 in Indo-Pacom. Um, so no bitterness here, only but sweet. So really short and sweet for me. Um, cheese, 
Jess, congratulations on taking command. You're more than ready for this job. I mean, you look at your intense, incredible operational background and then your programmatic background, uh, both the Headquarters Marine, Co Marine Corps, the JPO, N95, and other places like that. Uh, you are the right guy for this job. So uh, Denise and I wish you well in this command. I look forward to all your future success um, and certainly are excited to see where you're gonna take this place. So congratulations, my friend. And I've known both of these gentlemen for decades. This is, this is a really, really good day. All right, Spicoli, uh, to you and Heather. I'll tell you what, um, I mean, you heard it all in the citation. I'm not gonna dwell on too much of that in the interest of time, uh, but when I think about your command, the word that comes to mind is impeccable. Absolutely impeccable. I mean, you have pushed forward every aspect of Marine Corps aviation an incredible distance. And some of it was through your formal operational test hat, but a lot of it was based on your own initiative informed by force design and a lot of the initiatives that are coming out of headquarters aviation, things like Project Eagle. And that's everything from all the type model series aircraft represented behind me. What you can see coming in for the guns kill in the F-35s and MQ-9, you even set conditions for that. Uh, and we look forward to getting two of those aircraft in the systems here in our air command and control community. Uh, things like kill webs, kill chains, you know, digital interoperability, the list goes on and on and on. But absolutely impeccable and you pushed it really forward. The other thing I think you're, you're really proud of, and you know, we had a vision back in 2011 on what VMX-1 could be and should be. And it was kind of informed off of the Air Force model where they have the WIC and the 422 co-located up in Nellis. I know there's a duck and people like Hoover that are probably as proud as I am today to see that if we could take our, test, our operational test squadron and kind of relocate it and consolidate it next to our weapons school, uh, then we could really, really get some synergy out of that. And that's been fully realized on your watch. I mean, this is the vision we had back in 2011, uh, and you've made that happen. So really well done. But I'll tell you what I'm most proud of uh, during your time here in, as commander uh, is your impact that you had on climate and culture here in the unit. You invested in the people here. And I'll tell you, that investment is going to pay dividends for generations of commanders. Because if you get the climate and culture right of a unit and you get the people right, then they're going to carry that unit and you've done a superb job there. So on behalf of Denise and I, I want to say thanks to both of you. Uh, I wish you a safe trip to Aloha. You're going to do amazing things in indo -Pacom. Like I said, you're walking into another easy job. Uh, really, really well done. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. I'd like to announce the outgoing commander, Colonel Hip. On August 2nd, 2023, Advancing Expeditionary Operations, VMX-1 landed an F-35B on the Pacific Coast Highway for the very first time. After that airplane landed, it was refueled and rearmed with eight small diameter bombs and two AIM-120 air-to-air missiles. By Marines and sailors from VMX-1, they were inserted by two MV-22s from VMX-1. Overhead, two Hueys provided command and control, and an MQ-9 Reaper provided an airborne network uh, relay and ISR of the uh, node. After they relaunched that F-35, a short time later, a Navy H-60 came into the zone. Also refueled, rearmed with torpedoes and sonar buoys, demonstrating the joint capability and then that airplane also launched out on a follow-on mission. We named that exercise the City Iceberg. It was designed and executed 100% by the Marines and sailors of VMX-1. And that's just a small piece of what this unit can do to demonstrate capability and do operational tests and conduct operational tests. General officers, SESs, commanders, friends and family, and most importantly, Marines and sailors, civilians of VMX-1, thank you for attending the ceremony today. There's a lot of people that I'd like to thank uh, and, and address by name, uh, but it's hot and the Marines are standing in the sun, so I'm not gonna do that, so I'll hit a few. Uh, Lieutenant General Garrett, thank you for being here. Lieutenant General Hailston, thank you. Leader General Kalea, uh, SES Loxley, thank you for being here, Director. It means the world to us. Fellow commanders, uh, and we're fortunate enough to have two former VMX-1 commanders here today with Hoover and Mud Ducks. Gentlemen, thanks for, uh, for coming to join us. Now, uh, again, uh, sir, thank you for the kind remarks. Um, and, and we heard the citation, and, and I just want to start up front by saying 
None of that was because of me, but it was because of the Marines and sailors of BMX One, uh, and the blood, sweat, and tears they poured into everything we've done here. And so uh, I'll start. I don't want to forget uh, Third Mob Band. You guys sound absolutely terrible today. I don't know what happened. Uh, kidding, of course. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for driving over from San Diego and enjoying some of the refreshing Yuma temperatures. Uh, you guys are the linchpin for making the ceremony special today, uh, so thank you for that. I'm going to start by thanking a couple of key leaders uh, that have basically made this unit successful over the last two years. And I'll start with the Executive Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Barron. She's the backbone of the Officer Corps and this unit, the most professional officer I've served with. She's commanded in my absence and has impeccable judgment. Um, you kept this squadron uh, executing all the time. Uh, thank you for everything you've done here. Sergeant Major Galvez, I, I've loved working every single day with you. Your leadership and compassion for the Marines and sailors of this unit is unmatched. I've never seen anything like it. The way you lead by example is incredible. Um, the Marines of this unit are lucky to have both of you on the uh, command team, and she's as lucky to inherit you for a, a little bit of time there. Naga, oh, sorry, AMO, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Pomroy, and Master Gun Sasser. What an incredible leadership in the, in the barn. Uh, Master Guns, the way you have made incredibly challenging personnel uh, problems look easy to solve. And AMO, the ease at which you guided both hangers through a full inspection cycle, scoring 10 points above the third mile average in all of our inspections, absolutely amazing. Thank you for that leadership. It enabled us to do everything we wanted to for operational tests. Naga, Mary Beth, and Champ, who's not here, you kept us successful on operational tests, which is why we exist. And, uh, and it's your foresight, your attention to detail, and your planning that made that happen. And so, uh, Mary Beth, you in particular, uh, have kept the train on the tracks so many times. Uh, whether it's by nurturing, nurturing our relationship with Ops 4 keeping our funding in line, and making sure we had the money to do the things we needed to, and managing all of our assault support operational tests. Uh, you made us successful. Uh, Gag, Stoner, Jug, uh, Tulsa's not here, and, uh, and Moe's moved on, but uh, it's awesome to be a commander in, in Yuma, and you're going to love it, Cheese. We often joke that there's no problem that can't be solved by the four colonels on this base, and we've, uh, we've made that true on numerous occasions, so it's been great and awesome working with you guys. Heather Mack and Wyatt, thank you for sharing me with BMX1. Your patience, support, and understanding is incredible. I love you guys. All right, for all the BMX1 families, thank you for sharing your Marines with BMX1, for supporting them and allowing this unit to thrive. There's been a lot of people that worked on the ceremony today, uh, from the attention to detail that went into all the seats, the bulletin, making sure the gates were unlocked, all the static display. So thank you to those Marines. Thank you to the Marines of the ceremony. You guys look incredible. Uh, it's important that we honor VMX1 with this ceremony and uphold our USMC traditions. Thank you for the hard work that you put into this. Sergeant Major, they look amazing. Well done. All right, I started out talking about the uh, ice, uh, Obsidian Iceberg vignette, uh, and that's just a small piece of what VMX1 has accomplished. Uh, there's so much more that we could talk about, but that's not what's important. That's behind us now, and it's behind VMX1. What's important is that this unit continues to kick ass and accomplish the mission of making marine aviation more lethal and survivable. It's got to make marine aviation and therefore the Marine Corps ready to fight and win against a peer adversary. And I will tell you, the shadow of that peer adversary grows every day. And we are one flashpoint away, whether it's the second Thomas Shoals, an incident in the Taiwan Strait, or a bomber intercept gone wrong off the coast of Japan from being in open conflict. And the unit that's going to make us able to answer the nation's call is VMX-1 by pushing lethality and survivability. If you look out on the flight line today, you'll see more variety and depth of Marines and machines than anywhere else in the Marine Corps and certainly, more most likely, the DOD. What this unit can accomplish with this team out here is truly noteworthy. We can have an idea on Wednesday, design the plan and sign a flight schedule on Thursday, and execute on Friday. This is where innovation happens. This is where we test weapons, software. This is where we need to develop tactics, techniques, and procedures. This is where we prepare to fight and win. Geez, the Marines that have gone before you have poured their blood, sweat, and tears into making this unit what it is today. You now have the Marines, the machines, and these beautiful facilities to take it to the next level. I know you're going to do it, man. The unit's in good hands, and I know that VMX will continue to win and succeed on your watch. Marines, sailors, civilians of VMX-1, it's been an absolute honor 
to be a part of this team with you. And uh, I can't tell you how much I'm going to miss you and everything that, uh, that you stand for and what you've accomplished. If you find yourself passing through Hawaii, look me up and uh, come find me. The first Mai Tai is on me. Silver Fidel. All right, geez, it's your time now. It's, uh, I want to uh, introduce the commanding officer of Marine Operational Test Evaluation Squadron 1, Chief Alpizo. Hey, thanks, Nicole. Um I also want to thank you for the tremendous turnover. Um, you show how it should be done, and uh, you've set us up for success, and all I'm going to do is sustain your success. So I really appreciate that. And, and Heather, thanks for the warm welcome. We wish you guys all the best. Mac, Wyatt, wish you guys all the, all the best in Hawaii. As they say, travel with Pelicana. All right, so do that and have a great time out there. Um, hey, uh, I want to just recognize again, very briefly, uh, Spicoli mentioned it, the band. Uh, Spicoli, thanks for making sure they were here. All right, and uh, you all sound great. You're the icing on the cake. Uh, to all the officers, staff, and COs, Sergeant Major, and all those who work behind the scenes, the Marines out here on the parade deck today, it's a tremendous display and such a warm welcome for us. So thank you and uh, very well done. Uh, echo the welcome to our distinguished visitors, DCA General Hailston, General Calais, um, Mr. Loxley, uh, and all of our uh, DVs. We've also got a who's who of uh, 06 commanders here, Juggler, Stoner, Marty, Warren, um, and a Spud, I think, is down here as well. It's really great to have you all here to join us today. Um, I want to uh, welcome one person in particular, and uh, very special to me. Um, so, a Captain retired U.S. Navy, Doug Watson, who uh, served with my dad. Uh, Doug, you've been a friend of the family for 47 years. Uh, thanks for being here today. Thanks for your support, and thanks for standing in. Thanks for standing in for the pizza man. I really appreciate that. Um, We've got a ton of folks, and uh, like we mentioned, it's hot. Uh, we've got some folks online as well. I just want to acknowledge we've got our in-laws, uh, probably our mom, and hopefully our two recent high school graduates are tuning in online, but we've lost control of them, so uh, who can tell? But if you're online and you're listening, we love you, and uh, thanks for joining in. All right, Pin Charles, um, welcome to Yuma. Welcome to VMX1. All right, I've got to give you this coin so you have it, all right? You've got to carry this around, especially today, because all these people right behind you are looking for free drinks, so I don't want you to be saddled with that tab, okay? So hold on to that, and uh, welcome, I'm excited for you out here. Uh, on that, we got tons of friends and family here. We got Black Sheep, we got Tomcats, we got Spades, we got Warriors, we got Tigers, uh, friends, uh, mentors, peers from all phases of uh, professional career and personal life. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. We really look, look forward to catching up with you all uh, here later today. Hey, just over uh, 23 years ago, May 2001, Young First Lieutenant Del Pizzo came screaming through that front gate in a Toyota 4Runner, 97 Toyota 4Runner with an 86 Bayliner that, uh, that somebody sold me hitched to the back. Um, and I had all my worldly possessions inside. And I was the most excited I had ever been in my entire life to head down the flight line and join uh, the black sheep of VMA 214, where I knew the AMO at the time. I did not think there would be a day in my life where I'd be more excited until today. Not a lot has changed, some things have. But I'll tell you a couple things that I think are most important. The first thing, the first change, is I have the coaching, teaching, and mentorship over the years of all of you. You guys have put your mark on me, you give me love and support, and I'm here because of that, so thank you. The other thing, big change, is as my friend put it the other day, I won the lottery when Jessica agreed to marry me. So uh, Jess, thanks for letting me do one more lap in the pattern. It's a big lift. And I love you. Listen, uh, I could not be more proud to be the commanding officer of the Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron. Um, it is the privilege of my life to be able to work alongside the pros here at VMX1. Uh, look forward to catching up with all of you afterwards. And uh, thank you, and Super Fidelis. In lieu of flowers, Colonel Hip and Colonel Del Pizzo have elected to make a donation to the Semper Fi Fund.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding Officer of Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron 1, Colonel Charles W. Del Pizzo. Colonel Del Pizzo would like to invite all past commanding officers of Marine Operational Test and Evaluation Squadron 1 to join him in the reviewing area for the pass in review. As a reminder, please rise as the colors pass in front of your position and remain standing for Anchors Away and the Marines Hymn. It is now customary that all Marines, past and present, who have served honorably sing the first verse of the hymn. Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is Lieutenant Colonel Douglas R. Cantier. The 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing Band is conducted by Sergeant Erica Silva. Platoon Commander for First Platoon is Major Joshua Daly. The Color Sergeant for today's ceremony is Sergeant Oscar Martinez Fernandez. Platoon Commander for 2nd Platoon is Major Steven Whitaker.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Colonel Hip and Colonel Del Pizzo would like to invite you to join them for the reception at Lutz Casino following the ceremony from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. On behalf of the commanding officer, Marine Operational Test Evaluation Squadron 1, Colonel Charles W. Del Pizzo, thank you for your attendance and Semper Fidelis.